All right, thanks for checking out this video here. This is going to be kind of an overview of this particular unit. This is a uh, pretty good size unit. It's a uh, Gallagher M5800i. It's one of the part of their I series, they call them. There's about uh, currently of 2021, there's uh, one, two, three, there's four of them that are part of the I series um, stuff. That before these, um, they have an MB, it's either MB or MBS, 1800i or 2000i. Those were dual powered AC or DC units. And then they get to the M5000i and the M10,000i. Those are straight 120 volt units here in the States. But back before the uh, MBS or MB800i, that, there were just strictly three units of M1200i, M1800i, and M2800i that were strictly 120 volt units sold here in the States. But we're going to kind of go over this unit real quick and just kind of tell you a little bit about it. Uh, pretty good size unit. This one's brand new. Um, I don't go out of my way to sell too many things, but we are a dealer for the Gallagher brand and a guy online. I uh, was on YouTube of what he was doing, but found out that we sold Gallagher, could sell them, and uh, he called me up, and we could just talk shop about what he had going on, and he's got a big Cyclops unit that's, that's messed up on him. He's going to send me that one to work on, but he needs something in the meantime, and um, he didn't want to go smaller, and he wanted to kind of stay in the same size range. I said, okay, well, you know, that's a 40 joule stored, 30 output or 32 output. So I said, well... The only thing that Gallagher's got that's not smaller than that one is they got this model, the 5800i, which is 58 stored, like 38 or something output joules. So, uh, so they got that one. They got the 10,000i. I give him price on both. He's like, oh, 10,000i, a little more money I want to spend. It's not, it's way oversized for what I've got. Um, but no, so give me a price on that 5800i. So I did. And he wanted to get the remote control for it, so he got the remote control for it. He I called him back, gave him a price on both. And he said, sounds good to me. Go get it. So I drove down to Gallagher and picked it up. So that was the nice thing about Gallagher uh, that, you know, we are a uh, – we've been working on all brands of fence chargers for uh, 17 years or so, eight, 16, 17, 18 years, somewhere in that range. But only last, like, since January – roughly of uh, 2021 to be, become a dealer for a brand so um we chose gallagher because of the how they're easy to deal with they're good people never had a bit of trouble with getting something figured out or having if i got a question or something i can just call them up they give me they don't if that person i talked to didn't know the answer they'll pass me to the right person that does i don't usually get passed around too much try to find the right answer most of them are pretty slick on what they smart on what they know um and then I can just drive down there and go pick it up. Gallagher's headquarters for the United States is about a 45-minute drive from where I live at. So if I don't want to pay the shipping on it, I just drive down there and go pick it up and come back. You know, that sort of thing if I don't have time to wait on it to get here. So he bought the 5800i, the 58 Joule unit. So we're going to um, just do a little show and tell on it. I don't. It, these do have a uh, digital controller. They come with them, a little screen. Uh, it tells you your voltage, the output the charge is trying to do. It tells your amp load and the draw that's on the fence that's dragging it down. Um, it, it also has a row of lights that flash. There's all kinds of parameters and um, uh, thresholds and alarms and things that you can do with that. And it's a good manual to read. I mean, there's a lot of user manuals that come with things that people just usually toss or disregard. That would be a good one to read because there's a lot of things that this thing can do. All the ICOs can do, and that digital controller is pretty nice to, to uh, look at. I've got a video on YouTube. If you do a search for um, how, is a, how to set up a Gallagher I series, just type that in there. I've got like a 20, 30-minute video or something like that of how that digital controller works and how to kind of set it up or how to tweak things, change things, that sort of stuff. So you can watch that video if you ever get one of these I series Gallagher. They're, they're pretty reliable. I don't really ever see these things come in. Um, of the uh, even the mid-sized Gallagher's, they're just pretty reliable. I don't see them hardly ever come in for repair unless they're lightning or um, uh, age. That would be one of the only two things that get them. Um, I've never been inside of one of these before, so we'll be able to take this apart, look at the first time uh, in front of one another. Uh, I did get a 10,000i, uh, or sold a guy 10,000i a couple, two, three weeks ago. And you got to see inside of that one. That's basically the same case design as this. I think that one's just got more guts and more parts to it versus what this one's got. Um, but overall, it's a pretty good size unit. Physically, it's big. I mean, it's uh, 
not a lightweight unit, probably weighs about 20 pounds, I would guess. And uh, good plastic that Gallagher uses on their stuff. They don't use some cheap uh, flimsy plastic that cracks and breaks over time. They use a good quality plastic. So uh, you do want to store, uh, store the uh, AC units uh, indoors. Uh, these do not have a gasket on them. They are covered up at the top a little ways in the way the case is designed. It kind of shields moisture a little bit, but there's no gaskets on these. So for the kind of money you spend on these things, keep them indoors or build a box form or something. These don't get that hot. So you don't have to worry about it overheating, sweating, and condensation, stuff like that. But let's go ahead and plug this in. Plug it to my power strip here. I'll put the power strip on here in just a second. Let me take the knobs off. They got three knobs on here. They got the red for your fence, green for your ground, and a black one in the middle is for earth reference. So you can kind of keep tabs of your ground voltage if you want. In case the ground voltage climbs up over a certain amount, you can keep tabs on that. It's not a, you don't have to use this. I mean, it's there just in case. Some people like to know everything, what's going on. Some people don't care. They just want to, they want the fence to be as hot as it can, as it can be. These good quality knobs. I think Gallagher makes these knobs in house. They impregnate them. Put this cap on top of the the metal that the bolt's made out of. The terminal bolt's made out of goes all the way through to the bottom. It's got a split bolt set up on the bottom side here, as well. And then I see some people they have split bolt type things. They'll put the wire in there, and just and they'll either curl it around or they'll crank the nut on the bolt on the terminal bolt are so tight with the pair of pliers that they end up damaging the wire and it arcs and arcs and arcs over time and I have a big of a problem inside here and it'll burn up one of the knob but the bolts not on this particular model but on other brands and other models that have split bolt type things um, when you put the wire on there just shove it up in there where it's underneath there and then just hand tighten it down make sure it's flush against the metal at the base of it and then just tighten up by hand you don't have to take a pair of pliers and crank it down like you're trying to tighten up a lug nut on a car these are also adaptive control units and we'll talk more about that when i open it up and make a little more sense but um how adaptive control works is um uh, I'll talk about more to make more sense when you open it up. But uh, it adapts output to the fence load. So if it's a um, if it's a pretty small fence or smaller than what it's capable of handling or a clean fence, it will only use what it feels that it needs to. You can see it's putting out, based on this tester, a little over 9,000 volts. But as the fence conditions worsen, because you either add more fence, you get a bunch of grass growing up on there, it will adapt its output to the fence conditions. Um, and all of the Gallagher units uh, from the 11 Joule, the M1100, and larger are all adaptive units. They all adapt their output to the fence conditions of what it feels. So you, that, that's one way you're able to put a bigger unit on a smaller fence without worrying about the... Um, um, without having to worry about the... Um, you know, overheating on the inside because it can't get rid of all its power because it's only using what it needs. A lot of brands don't do that. They put out all the power all the time, and usually you've got a lot of loss because you're not. If you got too too big of a charger on too small of a fence, or not enough resistance on the wire, the charger is going to try to put out all this power it can. But there's not enough there. A lot of it gets lost inside because it can't get rid of all its energy, and then it gets um, dissipated as heat on the inside inside the transformer, inside the other parts in the board, stuff like that. And then over time, it burns out. And some brands burn out quicker than others. <clears throat> so sometimes on a fence charger, sometimes bigger isn't always better on the uh, size unit. Because most time, if you're paying for power, sometimes you're not even getting all the power you're paying for because you're not, you're not, you're not sized right, depending on what you're trying to do. So we're going to take the screws out of this. This is a, uh, these do have security screws in them. i got to figure out which, which bit it takes. Um, what the hell tools did it take to get this thing open? There it is. I think it's right here.
So I'm going to take this, let's flip it around here. Come on. Oh, it's brand new, so it doesn't want to come apart. Okay, this is more than two screws. Oh, yeah, there's, yep, there is two more. I forgot. These two right here. Now it comes open. Ah, right, there's the inside of it. So on an M10,000i, I think they that yeah they got different circuit boards and they got different amount of capacitors. And M10,000i's got two transformers more capacitors in a different circuit board i think the logic board what they call it on the outputs i think those are the same and i think this transformer here is the same on a 10,000 i as well but the 10,000 has got a second transformer sits up top here so but what this unit does is on a normal fence setup it's only going to use certain amount of capacitors and through the transformer but as it feels more stress on the line grass more fence wire or whatever it will pull it will gradually pull in more and more capacitors to push through the transformer to put more power to the fence so it only uses what it needs and see that yeah be, make sure you discharge these things these capacitors i never never worked on one of these but all these are all charged up i'm sure at least some of them probably are since i did plug it in so this thing's probably holding a charge on one of these things but the nice thing about it is you know, all the parts are made for this. I never had to work on a big Gallagher one like this, but, you know, it's pretty straightforward on a troubleshooting thing. You can test capacitors, a board. The good thing is, compared to, like, um, Speedrite 63 Joule or 36 Joule, whatever, on their big units, all the capacitors are, are soldered to their board, and you can't just wiggle them. These you can wiggle and pull off. It comes right off where speed rights are soldered to the board. And when you, if the board ever goes bad, you have to, when you buy a new board on a speed right, it comes with this big capacitor already soldered on there. So you're paying for the board and all those capacitors where, like this one, if the capacitors were all good and the board got hit by lightning, we just have to just replace the board versus replacing all the other parts. So that's what's nice. And everything's all, you know, kind of uh, tells you what size each one is. So it's 30s. I don't know what these. These are tens up there, so these are, even though they're physically the same size, physically, they probably got less microfarads, they may have less um, voltage. These are 1200 volt capacitors, 30 microfarad, 1200 volt. Pulse grade capacitors, these are probably one of the best type of capacitors out there that you can use. Not, uh, some brands use capacitors like this as well, maybe a different color or a different sticker on there, but a lot of them carry the same capacitors. On certain brands, uh, Parmac doesn't, Zariba doesn't, but they're a cheaper brand, so that's why their capacitors are different. There's a logic board right here. This is what does all the communicating to the uh, display controller, the digital controller that tells all the stuff. Um, it's where all the smarts are on the thing. I mean, the circuit board's got a lot of, I'm sure it's got a lot of smarts on the front side, but I really don't want to take a bunch of stuff out of there. There's the uh, ribbon cable that ties over there, but um pretty looking unit i'm gonna discharge the capacitors i'm gonna stick it back in there i just don't want to... so that's how that adaptive control kind of works you know you can kind of see oops, a little bit of charge built up on it still but not a lot i discharge it somewhat with that resistor but yeah it just takes a few capacitors at a time as it sees fit and as the fence conditions worsen it pulls in more and more and more eventually you might if worst case it might pull all these in here and shove it through that transformer but they got great big transformers and gallagher makes this transformer in-house this is made by them in their own factory they don't outsource it to another company one thing that they outsource for another company that they buy from are these capacitors these are made by um another company and um and a lot of like cyclops uses these blue ones uh, speed right uses them power wizard uses a variation of these 
um, as well. So a lot of the better brands use these blue capacitors. Maybe a different size or whatever, but the same company that makes those, makes these blue ones. They're good. They're, they're pulse grade capacitors made for electric fence chargers. That's what they're designed for. So, but it's a pretty, uh, pretty slick unit. We're going to box this up along with the remote control and send it to the customer, let him uh, hook it up and go to work with it. And um, good thing it carries a three-year warranty. Lightning's covered by the warranty, and all these parts are made for it. You can get every part in the book on these things. But never had to work on one, but as you can see, it's pretty slick on the inside and pretty fancy looking. But it's um, for a repair guy standpoint, it doesn't look like it's going to be too terrible. You've got to take your time and do it right. So if you ever have one of these things that breaks on you, you're know, welcome to send it here. We are... Except to do warranty work on the Gallagher stuff. We don't get a lot of warranty stuff in, but we are set up for warranty and, of course, not warranty on all brands and models. But we're going to put this thing back together, send it back to the customer, and get this out the door to them. But we're, we are a repair place by trade is what we do. I don't sell a lot of units. We sell one here, one there. But uh, most time it's... Um, you know, repairs, 95% of what I do is repairs. And we sell some parts on occasion. And sell a fence charger or two here and there. But anyways, if something comes up, give us a holler. I'd be happy to help you out. Until next time, we'll see you guys later on.